In the last section, we took a look at how to send post data from our login form using Axios to our backend, which we're handling in this post route for slash API slash login. But instead of just echoing back the email and password, let's actually authenticate our user. So let's pass the email and password values to an authenticate function, which we'll create. And we'll create it above our server, so above app. And I'll say const authenticate and accepts the email and password parameters. And to do some kind of mock authentication for our user, we're going to use an API endpoint from JSON placeholder. So JSON placeholder dot type of code slash users. So if we go to this endpoint, we'll get 10 users and we can use any one of them, any one of their information in order to perform some mock authentication with our login route. So we'll provide an email to our form which needs to match this email value for any one of these users and the password will be a website and then back in authenticate we're going to make this an async function and we're going to await and then bring in Axios so we can make a get request so up at the top we will say const Axios and require Axios say Axios dot get and use this endpoint from JSON placeholder and we will destructure the data that we get back in the response object and from this function we just want to return from this data array so this will be an array of users from this array we want to find the one find the given user where if user.email matches the email that's provided as well as if user.website equals the password, then we're going to return the user, the entire user object. So we're returning the user from this find array method, and then we're returning what returns from find. So we're getting all the user data from the authenticate function. So to properly execute this within the callback for our post handler, we need to make this async await to, and we'll set the return data to user data, to a variable called user data. We could just call this user, and if we don't have a user, if this isn't, this authenticate function is not successful in finding a user, we want to return a error, or I should say, we want to return a status code, which represents the fact that the credentials that have been provided were not correct. So for that we can return from this function a response where we'll use the status method to set the status code to a 403 status, a unauthenticated status where we send back the message so we can use in addition to the JSON method which we previously had we can use send as well to send a response and we can say invalid email or password. Otherwise if we do get back a user we'll continue with the function and we'll create a user data object. So from the user object that's returned from authenticate we want to grab just the name property as well as the email property. So we'll set name of user data to user dot email and email to I should say name to, to user dot name and then user then email to user dot email then we're going to include a type property which will pass to all of our user data objects for users who are authenticated a string that signifies that a user is authenticated a, and this will allow us to perform checks on our client to ensure that's the case. So type will ultimately be set to the string authenticated. In order to reuse this string, we'll create a variable. We'll do this again outside of app called 
auth user type set to the string authenticated. So this would be useful in particular if you're considering role-based authentication. Say if you had an admin user type, you wanted to separate authenticated users from administrators or what have you. So ultimately we're going to send the user data back to the client with the JSON method. However, we also want to store the user's session as a cookie. So we want to respond with a cookie as well. So how do we do that? We can easily create a cookie with Express with res.cookie. And there's a lot of options that we can pass to this method. But in order to create our cookie, we're also going to have to parse our cookie as well at some point to read the contents of it. To parse cookies, we're going to need to install a package called cookie parser. So this will be another piece of middleware. We can add it right underneath where we're executing express.json and we'll bring in up at the top of our file cookie parser from cookie-parser. So to use we'll pass cookie parser and execute it and optionally if we want to provide signed cookies which are a specific type of cookie which will be able to tell if the client has modified it. So signed cookies are essential for providing the most secure variant of cookie authentication possible because of course if the client is modifying our cookie trying to change it then we don't want to use it. We can no longer use it to keep track of our user, to authenticate our user. So to sign our cookies we're going to need to provide a secret, a cookie secret. So normally we'd put a secure value like a cookie secret in a .env file for environment variables, but we're just going to put it with our auth user type variable up here at the top. We'll say cookie secret and you can set it to whatever you want, some random string. And then we'll pass it in to cookie parser. So now that we've added cookie parser as middleware and added this cookie secret, now within our route handlers we're able to read signed cookies from the request as request.signedcookies. So to create our cookie, the first argument to res.cookie is the name. We'll give it the string token. We'll just call this token. Then we can give it a value. Well, we want to create a cookie with the user data we'll pass in the user data and then as an optional third argument we can include an options object so we'll call this cookie options which we'll create so one of the options that we can pass to it is we can provide the domain of our site if we wanted to to ensure our cookie is only valid for the given domain. We can use the HTTP only flag for the cookie which prevents JavaScript access to the cookie meaning client client side access to the cookie. So we'll set HTTP only to true. We can use the secure flag meaning that the cookie is only going to be set for HTTPS requests. So we can say secure is going to be not in the development environment. So in dev it's going to be false, but when it's in production it'll be true. And finally we can set signs to true, which means we can verify the source of the cookie. So all of these options make our cookie authentication as secure as it can be. And with that if we save and we'll head to our let's go to auth. So right now we're just going to log the data that comes back. For our login, we'll make sure that we provide an email and a website from one of these users. So we'll just copy an email and a website. And we'll hit submit. So this is good. We're getting back the email the name and the type as authenticated. And if we provide an invalid 
password and we hit submit we'll get our 403 error so in order to avoid having to type in a email and password every time I'm just going to hard code a valid email and password in our state so that we don't have to keep typing it in or copying it every time. However, in order for these values to be passed down to our inputs so that they're automatically provided, we need to make this a controlled component. So we'll pass down to our email input a value prop set equal to the email value from state. So we'll destructure and render email and password those values from this dot state and then pass both of those values to their respective input. So now in our form it should be automatically populated with some valid credentials and finally we can open our console and take a look at the application tab and then if we head down to cookies we should see a cookie with the name of token and we should have in the value area a long cryptic string.